the next talk is on a paradigm shift in type 2 diabetes management with combination injectable uh, glargin and lixacinatide. Uh, it will be by Dr. Prabhrami Reddy. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, sir who is a senior consultant medicine uh, in internal medicine. He's completed his MBBS and uh, medicine from Sri B.M. Patel Medical College. He's an MRCP from the Royal College of Physicians, London, and he's the chief consultant uh, in internal medicine in Aditya Polyclinic, Hyderabad. He has a vast experience of more than two decades in internal uh, diabetes, uh, medicine and uh, diabetes management. Welcome, sir. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for the kind intro. So today, uh, we are going to deal with the simplifying diabetes management with the combination injectable that's called uh, iglar -Lixi. So I, as we know that the type 2 diabetes is a chronic progressive disease which has got uh, multiple pathological defects. So to address these multiple pathological defects, uh, we have each agent right from insulin to the oral GLP semaglutide. So despite, despite evolution of many glucose lowering therapies, still we have a challenge in diabetes management. So there are so many unmet needs to manage this kind of uh, pathological difficulties and not only even the pathological difficulties we have the factors imp uh, impacting the potential treatment burden of the complex treatment regimes so the main the multiple injections and with that so reduced flexibility then high risk of hypoglycemia and weight gain and uh, very erratic physical activities and erratic diet modifications and lifestyle ad adjustments so with these unmet needs, we need a good molecule to address these unmet, unmet needs. So this is in the form of a combination injectable, so which contains a combination of insulin glargin U100 and lixisetanatide. So it is recently approved for clinical practice in India. So this is a titrable two drugs. I would call it is not a fixed dose combination. I would call it is a fixed ratio combination. So in the form of iglarlixin. So this combination has got one basal insulin and one GLP-1 receptor agonist. We have GLP-1 analogs. Everybody knows that the pathological uh, mechanism of action of GLP-1 analogs. What does it they do? They increase the glucose-dependent insulin release, decrease the glu uh, glucose-dependent glucagon release, and increase the satiety and decrease gastric emptying. On the other hand, you have a basal insulin which targets the uh, fasting blood sugar, just mimicking the physiological insulin secretion. So what did they do? They do decrease the hepatic glucose production and decrease the gluconeogenesis and increase the glucose uptake in muscles and decrease the lipolysis. So with these two combinations, we have iglar -Lixi. It is a potent synergistic combination to address the unmet needs of the type 2 diabetes management. So what are the potential benefits of the combination of injectable therapy? Number one, everybody has got, as we said, it is a multiple injections. So it is a once daily dosing, a single injection. So with this, we have a weight neutrality effects and also a lower rates of hypoglycemia and improved GI tolerability as compared to the mono components and also effectively reduce the HbA1c and also controls both the fasting and the post-lunch blood sugar and address the multiple pathological defects as we said that uh, type 2 diabetes is a multiple pathological defects, omnia octet. Then and the more people achieving glycemic targets with this uh, combination of the inj injectable. So what do the uh, different guidelines advocate? So we have ADA, AACE, and ADA and ESD position statements. The ADA advocates the combination of basal insulin and the GLP-1 receptor agonist has a potent glucose lowering action and less weight gain and hypoglycemia compared with the intensified insulin plants. So what about the AACE position statement? So the patients who are on the failure of OAD are the GLP-1 analogs. In this kind of patients, to achieve the glycemic targets, need to add the basal insulin should be added to alone 
or as a basal in insulin with combination of GLP-1 RA. So what is the AD and EASD position statement in 2022 said? The combination of the basal insulin with GLP-1 RA results in greater glycemic lowering efficacy than the mono components with less weight gain and lower rates of hypoglycemia and better gastrointestinal tolerability than with the GLP-1 RA alone. So these are all the recommend, guideline recommendations on the combined injectables. So coming to the uh, evidences of the iGlarlixi, so we have robust clinical uh, evidence in the form of many trials. So the, especially the phase 3, 3B trials, named the Solidy and the Solimix study. These are the two landmark trials which are, we are going to discuss today. So the yeah, this is a uh, Solidy uh, trial. This is a randomized control trial, uh, 24 weeks open label, uh, done to compare the efficacy and the safety of iglarlixi with premixed insulin idagasp in Chinese adults with suboptimally sub controlled type 2 diabetes and OADs. So the total duration of the uh, trial is 27 weeks actually, the two weeks uh, for the screening and then exactly the 24 weeks is the uh, uh, week, uh, week treatment period and after the 24 weeks, the three days for the each arm, three follow-up days and here after the screening, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the population are the adults with type 2 diabetes with more than 3 months on the stable dose of metformin plus or minus a second oral anti-diabetic uh, that is sulfonylurea, glynates, alpha GI, DPP4 or SGLT2 inhibitors and the inclusion criteria of BMI is less than 40 kg per meter square and the HbA1c baseline is more than 7.5 to uh, less than 11 if previously on metformin plus or minus SGLT2 inhibitors and more than 7 to 7% 7 to less than 10% if previously on metformin plus second non-SGLT2 inhibitors. So before screening, so before randomization in this trial, so the uh, other second OAD were excluded except for the metformin and SGLT2 inhibitors. And here after the randomization 1 is to 1 ratio, the iglar lixi once daily and the ida gasp once daily and follow up for the end of the 24 weeks. So let's see the uh, primary endpoint. The primary endpoint is the non-inferiority in HbA1c change from basal line to week 24. So let's see the results. So also the, we have the other uh, safety endpoints and the secondary key efficacy endpoints and the other secondary efficacy endpoints. So the secondary, end uh, secondary key endpoints were the superiority change in HbA1c and the body weight from baseline to 24 weeks and the proportion of patients to reach HbA1c less than 7% at 24 weeks and the proportion of participants reaching HbA1c target less than 7% without body gain, weight gain and without hypoglycemia. So these are all the secondary endpoints. So what are the other secondary efficacy endpoints? The change in FPG and SMPG from baseline to 24 weeks and the proportion of participants reaching HbA1c target less than 7% at 24 weeks with no hypoglycemia. The, what are the safety endpoints? Safety endpoints in the form of the hypoglycemia, any hypoglycemic event divided into three. So ADA level 1, ADA level 2 and ADA level 3. ADA level 1 less than 70 and uh, more than 54 milligrams per deciliter and ADA, ADA level 2 less than 54 milligrams and ADA level 3 severe hypoglycemia. So these are all the safety endpoints. So coming to the um, baseline characteristic, almost uh, similar baseline characteristics for the two each arms. So this shows that um, uh, non-inferiority study and the superiority studies here. here so with the ida gas uh, in HbA1c reduction, in the first phase we have uh, two, mo two molecules, that is the iglarlixi and the ida gas have a non-inferiority in reducing the HbA1c level. So at the end of the 24 weeks. So if you compare with the uh, superior statistical superiority uh, uh, HbA1c reduction, so the people who are taking with the iglarlixi have a significant reduction in the HbA1c as compared to the 
Ida gasp. So comparing the uh, body weight benefit versus Ida gasp in the solid study. So here the weight body reduction from the baseline 24 weeks with Ida gasp is uh, superior uh, as compared with the uh, Ida gasp. Even the secondary key endpoints, the people uh, who are taking the Igalarlixi have reduced almost 72% achieved uh, HbA1c less than 7% at 24 weeks as compared with the uh, Ida gasp, which is against the 55, 15, almost 60%. And the people who are uh, achieving the less than 7% HbA1c without body weight gain at 24 weeks are greater percentage in the Igler Lixi, that is almost a 40.5% of the people achieved uh, this, and 26.5% of the people achieved HbA1c less than 7% without body weight gain at the end of the 24 weeks, and no hypoglycemic during treatment. So therefore, the greater proportion of the participants treated with the Igler Lixi reached HbA1c less than 7%, and HbA1c less than 7% without body weight gain, and without any hypoglycemia as compared to the Ida gas. So this is the uh, uh, reduction in the 7 point SNPG values. So here it is the uh, non-inferiority study at the end of the uh, 24 weeks. Both the Ida gas and the Igler uh, uh, have 7 point uh, SNPG uh, from the baseline to 24 weeks. But if you come to the uh, LS mean difference, uh, shows that the Igler uh, have a, a better 7 point SMPG uh, scale as compared with the uh, Ida GASP. So, this shows that the statistical uh, significant reduction in the uh, both uh, uh, breakfast and the lunch and the all meals uh, uh, postprandial excretions, but they have a uh, neutral uh, effect uh, of the both the Igler and the Ida GASP during the dinner time. So, Comparing with the uh, total insulin uh, dose required in the, both the arms, so the people who are taking the Igler Lixi showed less, num uh, num less number of uh, insulin dose required as compared with the Ida gasp. So coming to the uh, incidence of the hypoglycemia compared with the Ida gasp, so any hypoglycemia, so the in Igler uh, Lixi arm, so there is a significant reduction in the uh, hypoglycemic risk. If you're coming to the ADA level 1 hypoglycemia, even the uh, Igler Lixi people uh, have a less number of ADA level 1 hypoglycemia as compared to the Ida GASP uh, arm. And coming to the ADA level 2 hypoglycemia, there is a 6.9% uh, reduction uh, uh, in the Igler Lixi people uh, participants as compared to the Ida GASP. So therefore, the any hypoglycemia, any event rate of hypoglycemia, so the incidence of nocturnal hypoglycemia between the bedtime and the walking was lower with the Igler Lixi as compared with the Ida gasp. So, so there is another study called the Solidity study, so done for the non-inferiority and the statistical superiority uh, in HbA1 reduction and showed the superior body weight benefit and more patient achieved the composite endpoints and the lower risk of hypoglycemic events, no unexpected safety are the findings. Therefore, the Igler Lixi should be considered as a valuable option for advancing therapy in people with the type 2 diabetes who are suboptimally controlled on the OADs. So second, we move to the uh, second trial, that is the Lixilan Vo study. The subjective, uh, objective of the study is the randomized open label. Uh, to assess the superiority of the Igler Lix over uh, Lixisinated and the non uh, inferiority of the Igler Lixi over Igler in HbA1c change from a baseline uh, to 30 weeks. So, here we have a randomization. So, in one arm, we have a Lixisinide, two doses, 10 micrograms, 20 micrograms, along with the metformin. And the second arm, we have Igler Lixi with metformin. And third arm, we have Igler with metformin. So, almost the uh, similar uh, number of participants with the Igler Lixi metformin and the Igler metformin um, the, to study the primary endpoint of non-inferiority in HbA1c change from the baseline to 30 weeks. So here uh, with this arm uh, uh, demonstrated that the HbA1c reduction is very well uh, seen with the people who are taking with the Igler Lixi arm as compared with the uh, other two uh, arms and even the FPG change and the, even the two hour PPP, PPG reduction are also better seen with the uh, Igler Lixi arm as compared with the uh, other comparatives. So here, 
uh, also the people who are uh, achieving the early target HbA1c is much clearly evident from the uh, idler lixi arm as compared with the other uh, comparators. Even the weight change. So though we have a, a significant weight change with the uh, simple uh, uh, lixitinide uh, as compared with the idler lixi, so but it shows that the idler lixi will be a, a weight neutrality effects during this study. So therefore, the idler lixi complements Iglar and the lixinide effects to achieve the meaningful HbA1 reductions close to the near normal glycemia without increase in either hypoglycemia or weight gain compared with the Iglar and have low gastrointestinal adverse effects as compared with the lixitinide. So, moving to the other uh, uh, trial uh, with the BIAS 30. So, we have uh, two arms that is Iglar lixi once daily and the BIAS 30, uh, uh, 30 twice daily. So the total number of participants, 887 done in uh, India. So the inclusion criteria, type 2 diabetes more than one year, 18, more than 18 years of age, basal insulin plus OADs, HbA1c more than 7.5% 7 to 10%, BMI more than 20 to less than uh, 40. Basal insulin starting dose at screening is more than 20 to uh, less than 50. So here it shows that uh, the uh, LS mean, uh, the idler lixi showed a superior to BIAS uh, 30 in a change in HbA1c from baseline to uh, week 26. And even the, it is also superior into BIAS, uh, BIAS 30, change in the body weight from baseline to 26 weeks. Um, you can clearly evident on the slides. Therefore, the subsequent hierarchical testing showed that HbA1c reductions were superior with the idler lixi versus with the uh, BIAS, BIAS 30. So coming to the secondary endpoints, so the people who are taking the Iglar Lixi arm, so they have uh, achieved HbA1c less than 7%, almost a 42% as compared with the bias uh, 30. And the people also achieved less than 7% of the HbA1c without weight gain and without hypoglycemia is much superior uh, as, in, as compared to the uh, comparator bias 30. So even the total uh, insulin doses also very much reduced in the Iglar Lixi arm. So coming to the incidence of hypoglycemia is uh, uh, much uh, superior in uh, reducing the uh, hypoglycemia both in the any cause of uh, hy any hypoglycemia even AD le ADA level 1 and the ADA level 2 and the incidence of nocturnal hypoglycemia is also very very much less in the uh, uh, Iglar lixi uh, 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 arm as compared with the um, uh, other comparators. So, Find out finally what we do. Uh, conclusion is the Iglar lixi versus the BIAS 30. It has a better glycemic control with the weight uh, uh, weight benefit and less hypoglycemia. Fewer daily injections. Similar proportions of the side effects in both treatment groups. Therefore, the Iglar lixi is an efficacious, simpler, and the well tolerated alternative to premix BIAS 30 in uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. So let's see the uh, make of the pen. So. So this is the uh, pen uh, right from the 10 to 40. And uh, starting dose of the uh, Iglar Lixi, uh, we have uh, insulin IV patients directly start with the 10 dose steps. And the patients who are on uh, insulin glargin already, so they're taking the less than 20. So you can start directly to the 10 dose steps. And the people who are taking the insulin glargin more than 20, and you can equally substitute the 20 dose steps of the Iglar Lixi. And this is the ratio. We have a 2 is to 1 uh, pen. This is a 3 ml pre-filled pen. Contains 300 units of insulin glargin and 150 micrograms lixitinide. And the dose range is from, from 10. 10 is the minimum dose and the 40 is the maximum dose. So dose titration so should be uh, usually uh, if you have uh, more than 140, you increase the 4 units. And you, you, when you, with the blood sugar, fasting blood sugar, usually between uh, more than 100 and the less than 140 you can make it to the plus 2 and when the blood sugar fasting blood sugar reaches 80 to 100 there will be no change in the mm, Iglar lixi and when there is a less than 80 milligrams per deliciter of the blood sugar so you can reduce the two units so weekly dose adjustment is needed with a median fasting blood SMPG and what is the administration the main administration is with the subcutaneous once daily within one hour prior to the meal and the preferable that the, if you miss a dose, it should be injected within the hour prior to the next meal. So what are the uh, beneficiaries? The special population, elderly more than 65 years old, can be administered in the 
elderly patient also and can be used in patient with mild to moderate renal impairment and not recommended in patient with severe renal impairment so whose uh, egfr is less than 30 and also you be used in the uh, hepatic impairment so can be safely used uh, for lexithromycin no dose adjustment is required in a patient with hepatic impairment and the pregnancy should not be used during the pregnancy the risk of uh, potential risk of human is unknown and if a patient wish to become a pregnant or the pregnancy occur treatment with iglar lexithromycin should be discontinued and this is the uh, combination injectable to treat the multiple pathological defects of the type 2 diabetes the one injection once daily uh, within one prior to the meal, one hour prior to the meal so so what of the uh, take home message the combination injectables is a synergistic uh, once daily combination injectable of basal insulin glargin u100 and the prandial glp1 or elixinate that provides effective fasting and the post prandial glycemic control and uh, the take home message from the solid trial indicates that it is a simple well tolerated treatment that has shown better glycemic control with added body weight benefit and the lower risk of hypoglycemia events as compared with the idegas and what is the take home message from the solid uh, solid tree trial solimix trial it's compared with the bias 30 the iglarlixi is very very efficacious and the simpler well tolerated provide better glycemic control with the weight benefit and less hypoglycemia as compared to the twice daily by as 30 so these are all the take home messages so thank you and thank you for your kind attention